Hey there, dog trainer behavior technician Drayton Michaels. Thanks for tuning in to Modern Dog Training YouTube. Let's talk about how a 10 minute dog walk can really tire out a dog. There's a lot of misinformation out there about how long you need to walk your dog. Obviously, if you have the time and the dog is up for it and the weather is with you and you want to do a half hour, an hour, go for a couple hour hike, that's great. I encourage that. But generally, most dogs are being walked in between busy schedules. And that means people are working, raising their kids, working from home, running errands. And a lot of times what happens is people sacrifice the dog walk for the trip to the backyard, which is okay, but dogs really want to go out and gather scent. It does wonders for their socialization and it does wonders for their mental stimulation. A lot of times people will ask me, how long do you walk a dog? And I say typically between 10 to 20 minutes, depending on the day, the dog, and the weather. So if you have a busy schedule, which I'm sure you do, and you have a dog or two that you need to get walked, here's how you do it. Here's how you make sure in that 10 to 15 minute dog walk, you get everything accomplished. Number one, stays and waits. Make sure you ask your dog to stay and wait at doors, gates, street corners, etc. This means your dog is learning impulse control and they're doing it in small increments which we know is best for learning efficiently. Number two, allow your dog to gather scent as much as possible and for a reasonable amount of time. Typically I allow dogs to gather scent anywhere from five to seven seconds depending on what's going on. If I have to get moving I use prompts such as whistles, kissy sounds, etc. or a leave it cue to move the dog along to get to the next scent or in some cases I might even pay them a food reward for disengaging from that scent. Scent as we know is incredibly important to dogs. Scent as we know is something that dogs intrinsically want to gather. So please allow your dog to gather scent. It is a great stress reliever and it's also a great way for your dog to acclimate to their environment. It creates mental stimulation and it gives the handler a break so that they can take a look around at the environment and prepare for oncoming traffic, whether it be people, dogs, or actual traffic. Number three, training. We often hear that training is great for dogs and we know this because, well, an untrained dog is a dog that's much harder to deal with and much harder to communicate with. Training is communication. So here are the things that I recommend you do when you're on your dog walk for your dog so they are well trained and also getting maximum mental stimulation. Number one, the leave it cue. Ask your dog to leave it and make prompting sounds if they're distracted and when they do mark yes and pay them for that leave it. The touch cue, that's hand targeting where they target your palm. This is a great disengagement cue to get your dog refocused on you. And again, I often tell people if your leash is out a little bit farther than you'd like and you need the dog's leash shortened, ask for a touch cue. They come back and touch your palm and you can shorten the leash and move on with your leash walk. As we talked about at the top of this video, what to train stays and waits, especially at street corners and street crossings. It's very important. Counter conditioning, the mark and pay or yes and treat protocol, which we've made many videos on. When you do this for sudden environmental contrast, your dog will have less stress, less excitement, develop an auto disengage and pop off that marker when they hear the word yes. When you do this, you're gonna be teaching your dog a valuable skill and that skill is the environment is safer than you might think. The other skill is that auto disengage. When you mark and pay and yes and treat your dog for sudden environmental contrast, inevitably they will develop an auto disengage, meaning the stimulus becomes the cue to disengage. Again, if it's too fast, too soon, too sudden, too intense, the dog might freeze up, the dog might go over threshold and bark, but if you do this, chances are your dog is gonna have less stress, you'll have more success, and you'll develop that auto disengage. Alrighty, right, right, thanks for watching this video on how to maximize your short 10 minute dog walk and give your dog the most amount of mental stimulation while you're out there walking. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share, and pass this information on to somebody who might need it. My name is Drayton Michaels, I'm a dog trainer behavior technician, and I wanna thank you for watching Modern Dog Training here on YouTube. Have a great day.